Welcome to the Women's Planning Commission hearing. Uh, today we have a couple of uh, hearings, uh, one a, uh, a annexation hearing and one a legislative hearing. Uh, but first I'd like to call me to order and um, ask for any public comments on any item that currently with on the agenda for this evening. Um, I wish to mention that someone requested a hearing aid for this evening. If you are here, we do have it up here on the counter, so feel free to come up and get that and I'll explain how it works. Um, uh, adoption of minutes. This evening we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 uh, different series of minutes that we need to approve. So I ask the commissioners of those who are here to do this. None? None. Right. I didn't find any other. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to say no. Uh, move to approve the minutes for 146, 511, 68, 622, 810, 10, 12, 11, 23, 12, 14, and 111 of 2010. Very good. Move a second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Please hold roll. Commissioner Stein. Commissioner Honor. Aye. Commissioner Lejoie. Chair Powell. Aye. Very good. Thank you very much. All right. Let's move on to the first item on our agenda, and I will read the um, <coughs> information. Uh, this is the second part of the application. The hearing has been made by the Senate Bill's Project and Zoom Hearing. The second part of the application is the current criteria that applies to the applicant's proposal. If you know what the number of the criteria, please let me know. This is the second part of the application. The second part of the application is the written comments and input that has been received through the public application process for the application. The question of the judicial hearing proceeded with the Commission of the Federal Assembly and State Law and the Oregon City Municipal Code. The hearing procedure steps are shown on the charts behind the law. Anyone who speaks to the and go to the planning staff before you speak. All of us who report to our pictures must be marked as an exhibit by the planning staff before they can be submitted into the record. For the public record, please be glad to come to by signing your name and city of residence. This time, the hearing should be directed to the applicable approval criteria. If you believe any other criteria applies in addition to those, a distinct staff report identifying and discuss those criteria and explain how they will apply the application under consideration. A person does not have to testify in order to submit written materials in order to write the public record is open on each item. However, any person wishing for a continuing to keep the record open must make that request before the public hearing is closed. If the public person makes a decision with which you disagree, any issue which you may wish to appear to have been raised for the commission's consideration, the commission will issue all of that with sufficient specificity and the company by statements or evidence so that the city of the county can respond, the issue will have been judged appealable to the state land use board of appeals. This additional item of S. 197 of 796 requires us to announce the following. The first of the applicant to raise constitutional or other issues related to proposed conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow the local government or its president to respond to the issue by closing action for damage in the circuit court. At this time, the Board of Commissioners have a right to make a contact, conflict of interest, or a certain other statement to declare. Seeing none, we will move forward then. Dr. Christine, we will begin with this. Do you think I would like to ask any? Uh, of course. Is, is there any questions about that? Any questions of the commission hearing that we said we had no bias at this point? No. Okay. Is there any questions about the procedure? So, we'll be going to start the report by Tony Cockle and uh, move on from there. Tony? All evening, commissioners. We'll be presenting uh, requested annexation 0902. The applicant's requesting to annex approximately 53 acres, um, total with eight tax lots. Uh, the properties are inside the city's urban growth boundary, have a comprehensive plan designation of medium density residential. They currently have a city zoning designation of future urban ten and um, our area. Our uh, residential forest five acre. Um, there are 
on the on the on the on the pass slots uh, as part of the application. There are three properties located along Holcomb Boulevard that uh, there are one five zero three zero one five zero five zero one five zero seven six. A Holcomb Boulevard that um, did not sign the petition either in support nor against uh, the requested annexation. Uh, those properties did receive the original public notice as well as staff did send them the Planning Commission hearing agenda for tonight and the staff report uh, to make sure that they were aware that we were considering this. And the reason we do bring this up is in our comprehensive plan, as you're well aware, we do have a policy concerning the creation of islands. Um, if those properties were not included as part of this application, it would create a county island. Um, it's in your discretion whether those are included or not, but we have recommended that they are um, that they are included in order to comply with that policy statement. Uh, the purpose concept plan. Um, these properties are located within the Park Place concept plan, which was approved by uh, the city commission. Um, the properties proposed for annexation are actually all residential. Uh, there were other components of that Park Place concept plan that included uh, retail, commercial, multifamily. Uh, but the, uh, the tax lots in question here are all uh, medium density residential comprehensive plan designation. Um, the applicant has a triple majority, meaning they have 93 percent of the acreage um, that signed the petition, uh, 57 percent of the owners have signed the petition, and 61 percent of the assessed value represented um, are included uh, as the signatories to the uh, annexation application. Um, Compliance is necessary with the Metro Code. Um, one of the criteria addresses an annexation plan. We do not have any annexation plans uh, in this area that would be applicable. Uh, we are also required to uh, notify uh, necessary parties. Um, for this, uh, if the annexation is successful, uh, if it is forwarded to the vote and the vote is successful, the applicant would need to um, have another annexation to bring the properties into the Tri-City Service District. And one of the requirements is that the city concur uh, with Tri-City's decision to annex those to the, to the service district. Uh, it's more procedural. Um, we have recommended that. On your ballots, we did um, include Exhibits 13. It was the uh, transportation impact analysis that was left out of the, the original mailing, but it was part of the record. <laughs> uh, there's a letter from the applicant's representatives that they wish to address during their presentation. Um, exhibit 15 is a letter from Metro. Uh, Planner Ray Vallone indicating their support for the proposed annexation. And Exhibit 16 was submitted uh, about 8 30 this afternoon from Clackamas River Water. Um, they laid out some concerns that they had about the application. Um, and I'll address that as we move through this report. But we are entering those into the record tonight. And um, we'll address those as we go through. Um, concerning Clackamas River Water, the Parts of the proposed annexation are in the Holcomb Outlook uh, Park Place Agreement, the HOP Agreement for this area. And what, that's, what that says is that CRW, Texas River Water, um, maintains the lines up there, water, water lines up there. And then they are also, as part of that agreement, responsible for providing water to elevations above 450 foot elevation because the city doesn't have the ability to provide water above that. Uh, so we do have this HOP Agreement. We've gone through, we did meet with CRW initially in preparing this staff report. Uh, we identified the tax lots that would remain under CRW control, those that would come into the city under our control, and those that would be transferred to us at a later date upon future development. Um, we approached CRW and had some concerns about the language we use. Um, so we will um, certainly be happy to answer any questions you have about it. Since we didn't receive this memo at such a late date, we weren't able to prepare a response for it. So um, at, uh, at the conclusion of today's hearing, um, we can either uh, recommend for the city commission, or we're actually recommending we continue it for two more weeks uh, to the hearing on uh, February 8th, so that staff has a chance to respond in writing to the CRW comments and sit down with them again, and um, maybe they can submit another letter concerning uh, how we're going to handle the transfer of jurisdiction over those water lines in that area. Um, the applicant. Um, 
Mr. Special Guard and Select have actually increased uh, with the addition of several officers the last couple of years. Uh, we're up to 1.27 officers per thousand. Um, the applicant has, however, included a uh, Schedule A as part of this application, which identifies um, a contribution um, for every single family home and development in that area to, uh, to the police fund to help with that initial year of police coverage in this area. And that is included, and we are recommending that you do accept that. Uh, Consider the transportation plan. Historically, Oregon City has had comprehensive plan designations on all their properties, which we do in this case here. However, the Park Post Concept Plan, as well as the Beaver Creek Concept Plan, are the first master planning projects we've undertaken in the city. And as we're going through this annexation and reviewing the Park Post Concept Plan, one thing we realized was that the Park Post Concept Plan, as well as Beaver Creek Concept Plan, both delayed compliance, what's called the Transportation Planning Rule. And what that says is that whenever you do a comprehensive plan amendment or a zone change, um, there are some other instances, but the Oregon Department of Transportation uh, requires what was called the TPR, Transportation Planning Rule Analysis. And what it's doing is we're sharing the transportation plan can support, the transportation system can support the proposed development and the infrastructure is appropriate at day zero and 20 years out. So it's a 20 year horizon, 20 year analysis of the transportation impacts. The first one was the energy for the Paris Council Plan, and they would do the impacts and they identify the infrastructure improvements that are necessary and some good preliminary cost estimates as part of that. And we've been part of our transportation system plan to include those projects, and we're in the process of implementing this. But specifically, after the TPR, changes were made as part of the adoption of the concept plan, and they were actually delayed through the rezoning annexation of the properties in the concept plan area. We're recommending that historically we've annexed the property. And if the annexation was successful with the vote, it automatically got a city zoning designation. For example, if it was low density residential, even though we have R10, R8, and R6, with so three possibilities of zoning with that comp plan, that would go to the least dense. It automatically would come down and give it R10. So if it comes down later down and request the zone change to R8 or R6, they certainly could. But even if the properties are listed in the city in the urban growth boundary, since probably the 80s, if not longer, and they've had a plan designation. So the TPR compliance there, it, 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 it was addressed when it was given its original comp plan designation. And this is the TPR analysis has not occurred. So what we're recommending is that you edit that, that the property be annexed for the plan in the county zoning. If the election is successful, at that point, the applicant comes in and makes the investment to do the analysis necessary. Um, to show compliance with the terms of the transportation system and the TPR, but also water, storm, sanitary. Um, so they look like quite a big investment up front uh, to make those uh, investments. Um, while we're not as concerned about water and storm and sanitary, because those, we, you know, Hope and Boulevard does have all those facilities available. Um, there are some specifics that need to be addressed just because of elevation changes and whatnot, but the big issue is going to be transportation. So that's a little different than what you use it historically seen in these annexations. Um, you know, if there is the court that I request to, 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 to bring it in and do a zone change automatically, it's more than just the initial, it would automatically be zoned R5. If that request is made for all or part of this, we are recommending denial at this point. Now we can't demonstrate compliance with the transportation planning rule. This is the county. We provide a notice to the county. Um, we make a few that this is not providing um, to ticket services. Um, those are the issues that are in the Crackers County Conference of Planning, and those are being met. First, I'm the services in this area, especially when you consider what the park-based concept plan 
is you know, a lot of people to say it's a good thing to be able to practice like that for your corporate countries and their initials already. It was a policy uh, within the Park West Council plan that was adopted in the conference of plan that talks about those properties that are adjacent to the city where urban services exist are likely to come in first as part of the annexation process. Um, and that is the orderly fashion in which it should occur um, to extend those services out. Um, this is the first time the code has uh, a public conversation and the first time we talk about access to the site. And as I just said, um, we have Hocum Boulevard and Redland Road, Hocum Road North, Redland to the south, both minor arterials. You have Cattle Drive, Shelton Drive, Jerry Drive, all local streets that do step into um, one of the tax spots that are part of this annexation. Um, the first time the city of Hocum Boulevard is the second criteria in the road and city municipal code. Uh, so there are several goals and policies identified in the Park West Council Plan um, addressing um, some of the, the similar on those areas that are adjacent to existing city services, those areas that can be easily served with existing utilities that are stubbed to the property lines, uh, this is a logical place for the beginning of annexing in the Park West Council Plan area. You have access from Holcomb Boulevard, you have water sewer available, and not only Holcomb, but the other local streets that do stub to this area. Um, you're not, um, this annexation isn't being um, accomplished through a uh, first and a long-term extension uh, for existing city limits. You have more than 1,300 linear feet of, of uh, continually, continuous uh, area to the existing city limits. Uh, this also addresses one of the um, earlier last statute, section 222. Uh, which is criteria for the Oregon City Municipal Code, one of those criteria that would be contiguous to existing city limits, uh, which, which it is. Um, and as I said earlier, we're trying not to create any islands in this situation. It's a policy statement in the comprehensive plan that you, you as a decision making body, get to implement or get to interpret. Um, like I said, we are recommending that it be included in this annexation request. You can certainly disagree if you hear a testimony that. You find relevant, um, but as I did say, we did send notice twice to those two properties, and we haven't received anything. Um, no yes or no on the petition. I'm not really sure where where they stand on this request. Um, once again, a park west concept plan, you can use the concept section request, and then you have a very recent relevant document that looked at all. Of these land use issues in terms of transportation, public facilities, sanitary storm, natural resource protection, densities, um, the appropriate location of, of these land types and the appropriate mix. So, quite a lot of work has already been done trying to design this concept for each other. And the first step is the accident. And so, you know, what they're requesting to do and what our recommendation of just bringing it to the county that we mentioned is that the infrastructure. Um, adequacy issues, which have been identified. Um, the fact that there's natural hazards, wetlands, sea slopes, flood plains, um, the power of the purpose of the plan is going to find existing resources on the site. They're going to find their personal sea slopes, uh, colleagues on the site. Uh, and actually, one of the changes that occurred uh, was the revision to our top slope code uh, that happened concurrently that was reviewed and adopted as the Park Place Concept Plan was was being reviewed and adopted as well. I think it's important to remember that we do have existing code in place that does protect natural resources, uh, steep slopes, uh, buffer zones around our streams and wetlands when they're identified. Uh, so that work, that permanent work has been done. We do have existing code in place to, to address it, and it will be developed. Um, part of the of our code, which implements our comprehensive plan and the park place concept plan. Um, it's the uh, adopted um, open space and historic areas on the site. 
And once again, we would go back to what I was just stating before concerning the natural resources, um, a little redundancy here. We're talking wetlands and steep slope areas, which we have existing code to, uh, to regulate. Concerning transportation, the land uses, the design, have been addressed to the park place concept plan. In this case, we actually, as I stated before, have a lot more information and a lot more findings in the comprehensive plan for goals and policies and actual code that's been adopted specifically for the park place area, which you usually don't see in other parts of the city. Um, it would be fair to say that during the park place planning process, these impacts have been addressed and considered when we were looking at the densities that we were going to put in this area, the land uses that we were going to put in this area to support those new densities, the transportation connections that are going to be necessary to serve this area. So you have, you have, you have two things here. You have, you're bringing in five homes at the existing county designation. You can make a finding that this will have minimal to no impact. And then future development which we're not sure when it will happen, if it will happen, but you do know that they have to go through a zone change, which includes addressing the comprehensive plan again, um, and make sure that we do address all of those infrastructure and impacts on the surrounding community. So let's start over there. Uh, we do receive those comments that are late from Clackamas River Water. And, and looking at the comments that were submitted, we believe that um, the way we have written our, our recommendations for findings that we address what CRW is concerned about. Um, we're going to go back to them and see if it's a matter of words with them, because we did work with them and identify specific tax assets that would stay with CRW, that would come to the city, that would come to the city or later data plan development. Um, we've acknowledged the 450 foot elevation, so there's a little bit of misunderstanding on what, what the issue is. Um, but we would like the ability to request this to be continued for two weeks. We are recommending you let the applicant give their presentation. Uh, take any public testimony from those who come out tonight to be a part of this process. Um, be happy to answer any questions you have either now or after you've heard testimonies. If you'd like us to come back with certain issues that you've identified, if we can't answer them tonight, we can certainly do it in a memo. Uh, but we would like that opportunity to try and address this and get it in the record. And if we get CRW to either acknowledge what we put in there with a new memo or agree to what we are providing for you. So that the conclusion of my presentation. Be happy to answer any questions you have or yeah, no, I'm, 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 We'll make sure that you do get all of these asked well, in the next uh, for the next hearing as well. These will be in the record. Just want to make sure I have that access to that, and I do. Okay. Any questions or questions? First question was: um, Can you explain the difference between um, how the applicant satisfies the uh, transportation planning rule versus um, what they've done with respect to this transportation impact analysis report. So, the transportation impact analysis report went out 14 years. The transportation planning rule is required to go out 20 years. But it's different in terms of, in order to, and yell at me if I get this wrong, you need to show that the transportation system has adequacy at year 20 or when those developments come online. And that's either a commitment that goes improvements will be made, or your TSP is updated, and like your, your capital improvement plan is updated so that there are dedicated funds that would be available to make those improvements at that later date. It's a very, very high bar, especially when you're not only dealing with your local street system, but multiple city systems. Um, so that complicates it. Um, so I guess I'm answering your question. <laughs> the second question I have, um, the transportation system as the uh, concept we have 
and we also addressed, I believe, in, uh, I think it was the attachment to that you gave us, that talks about how much money is required to Highway 213 between Washington Street and Redland. And I just feel that the city spent some time contracted to upgrade um, the city's system development charges. Um, the only thing that can be talked about is what the professional show means with respect to this project and how it applies to the system development charges that have recently been um, updated. And can give us a context for um, the address of some of the issues that I had raised in my letter. President Kessling, I don't have a good answer for you yet. The, 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 the proportion of the responsibility of the agency, the responsibility of the commission, and the responsibility of Oregon. Department of Transportation and the Development Committee. So there's multiple materials that are responsible for the state highway system. Okay. Um, when, you know, we have these facilities in our grid in our city limits. So when it's a point in the city, we need to remove that. Now, is it true that the city pay 100% of those improvements? When or is 50% of that maybe going for providing the adequacy and capacity for trips to don't start or stop in city limits? And so, I think it's a very important issue where we can start to put in these long term improvements to the state highway system. And this is what we can identify them. And we're going for the facts. But the cost is not going to pay for them. We're just going to pay for a proportion of that. Um, this is still responsible for X percent and county X percent and state X percent. And then I'm going to have the developers pay a portion of the city because they're in the city. This is a lot of people who made it, and those discussions are extremely very early on. But we're going to be both at the city level and work with the city and make some of the things to address the need in the last 20 years. So I guess some of those transportation issues and compliance with the TPR are just coming up region-wide. So it's not a good idea. I don't have a good answer for you. This time, okay, thanks. And I'm sure you will be able to come back and, and have some further discussions. Okay, at this point, we're going to wrap up and come and make the presentation. I'm going to 
But right now, our residential development is in a little bit of a slump. We can't anticipate to see it turn around in the next three to five years, and we know that we need to be in front of the housing demand that we will see in the next three to five years. Again, we know how to build our house, to build our our physical and development community in part because we need to start with our foundation and we need to start with our ground floor. So we're just going to spend a lot of money on it now we need to build that first floor. We need to get started. The concept plan has already been adopted. We are going to begin the process for exercising and constructing the necessary vehicular and pedestrian connectivity um, the north to south movement. We are going to begin the process which, which has been identified by the authority of the IO companies where they went on. We are going to begin the process for constructing necessary infrastructure. It is possible through annexation and subsequent zone change and subsequent development that we will potentially, and this is a potential, be able to add some of this back into the public school system to potentially, at some point in the future, open a mothballed elementary school that is in this area. When will this happen? We have the planning commission to do it. We are really open for a recommendation of approval. So we to move to forward it on to City Commission. We spoke with the staff about a continuance. We would have to offer enough evidence on the record and a schedule of discussion with Will Clark and Ms. River Water so that we don't have to continue the hearing tonight. I'd like to see what other issues come up through the course of the hearing. We would move to go to City Commission for our first hearing on February 3rd. We have an election in May of 2010. We are anticipating a plan for exam change on this property in compliance with the comprehensive program for the spring and summer of 2010. With potential of this phase of subdivision approval 2010 2011, construction of our first phase of infrastructure in 2011, and with any kind of black occupancy of our first homes in our first phase sometime in 2012. So we, we are looking forward, we are trying to look into the future and we are knowing how long it takes to achieve those various goals, working backwards to say, now is the time to annex this property. <clears throat> how do we achieve this goal? Well, the support staff has been critical and I can't tell you how helpful and how supportive staff has been in moving through this process. We started, we started quickly, we got an application into stuff quite quickly. They were extremely supportive and helping us get all of the other details in place so that we could make those necessary time frames to be on the ballot in May. We are going to open for us a positive recommendation for the to the city commission that they fix um, acceptance and support for the thousands of hours of work accomplished through the workplace concept plan and the work that's been accomplished by my client, my development team, as well as city staff. And I think that this is a recommendation to the city commission to endorse the decisions that were made to implement the workplace concept plan and incorporate it into the Oregon City Comprehensive Plan. It's going to take the mic and step away and very quickly show you a large scale drawing and I'm going to use one of those maps here in your package. Okay. Come out of here. Do you have a switch? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You can hear me. What happened here is a little photograph. I have my, my right hand, right back markers that I'm going to use real quickly just to give you an idea. I'm going to slip it out of the side because I'm not hearing you and I'm going to see what I'm doing. I'm going to go to the next section. Let's try. Let's go to the next section. Oh, great. And I put the mic on this guy. Let's see if we can find one that works. Oh, yeah, that one works. Like this. So the, 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 the
Thank you for this one because there in front of you is part of our application package. Again, you can see how this and development jumps into a project. If the road is here, open the road here. What we are really hoping to be able to do is set the development where we already have three connections. As Seth already mentioned, our goal is for the course of the next summer and fall and winter to be able to divide out the infrastructure. The Zion system is how it will meet the Zion, excuse me, the Zion change criteria and then start to work on a development plan for the Zion right here. Because we have existing connections, we have existing infrastructure and we can start to connect and link these services so that we can begin to start to build an incremental plan. I have one other drawing here, which I have to say. This is actually the streets that you can see proposed. The future streets, you're going to the future streets, these are the streets that are the talk of your adopted practice and set plan so that you can begin to see the southern part of the pipeline with the northern part and the connections between Holcomb and let's say and then down to Redmond Road. I will just stop and address the main issues that I was going to talk about. I'm not going to repeat their comments. I concur with their comments. Um, pretty much on this one, we have exception. We are hoping that we can answer your questions tonight and answer some of the questions we have raised the issues so that we would love to be able to get a recommendation of approval from you tonight so that we can move on to city commission. Okay. Any questions? Any questions at this time? Anyone? 
Well, you want to ask because this is on track and you want to wait until after you get an answer. I would too. I was just it. I don't know if you have too much of my time. That's why I didn't know whether you wanted that information. I think it would be beneficial for you to hear from civil engineering traffic engineer at this time. I, I, I would love to hear from the traffic engineer and civil engineer. Is that okay? Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm just going to be done traffic engineering. The traffic engineer that particularly the, uh, Construction of that good analysis for this uh, project. And then I live at uh, 7505 Southeast Thursday Avenue in Portland, Oregon 97202. And uh, uh, I'm going to be talking about the analysis together. To be able to do the results of the request that might come through here and in parallel with the uh, request for doing the annexation for the election. So, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. There was a lot of analysis that was already done for the park post case up here. I'm sure that the public has become a commercial and a documentation. But so that would be something that we will put together and send it to you at a later time. The transportation that we did prepare uh, short term conditions upon the increase out of these uh, 54 acres under the uh, anticipated uh, zone uh, for residential use. So, there was a short term analysis we scoped out with the city's uh, traffic engineering sub consultant uh, and, and some of that document. We looked at uh, uh, what the cost is going to be. For this development of this property in the short term, I think our forecast was for the year 2014. Uh, and here we are with some recommendations on how to open the road and how to finish them. What sorts of things we can do to, uh, you know, make sure that access is going to function adequately. Uh, there were a few, uh, um, there were two locations that were back on their sex, but we were not happy where we had some recommendations for uh, uh, future improvements there. Uh, I think what we were proposing to do at that location is uh, to control the proportional share class that would be under these developments in tax. It's a, a process that, that the city and the city's community and acceptance on and at other locations for other types of subdivision developments. And so that was just something uh, that we would propose uh, for our indication. Uh, again, this proposal for a, a short term government window, we do understand that we have to work around town and pass the components of the transportation plan in the when we go in for a uh, proposed zone change. So if there's any questions that uh, you may have about my study, I'd like to go into those. I know Mr. Um, Shani had been brought up before and had some, uh, some questions about the analysis that I put together. I do have a question, and uh, this is 
for the the, the right data that you use uh, is that is that from the park based plan or is that current data that you use? Uh, all the current accounts that we did were uh, 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 accounts. Okay, so within the last yeah. 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 year, within the within the last month or so. Very good, thanks. I completely agree with that. It just it's more credible and it just makes more sense. So I'm glad that you did that. I appreciate it. Uh, any other questions regarding traffic at this point? No? Okay, thank you very much. Any more questions? I'm going to start with the new design. I'm going to start with the new design. I'm going to start with the new design. The new design is because we're not proposing the site plan at this time. And uh, since I saw that we did not like that idea, um, what I'm proposing is that we could work with the city and the uh, district in the next five days and resolve this within a week and give them any feedback that they need in order for them to be happy with the plan. Um, if I look at the staff report on page four, the city specifically did a great job identifying how water was going to serve into this project. Um, knowing that, since there's no site plan, no design was done, and not as a company myself, as an engineer, we do water design um, on a water basis for subdivision work, so we can get this done in a very efficient uh, timeline and streamline this and get it done within a week or so if, uh, if this is done and the, 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 uh, the uh, water district can meet to this. And presentation is rather short, but uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Do you have any questions regarding the water system? I'm sorry, go ahead, sir. That's the first one. I didn't know that there's a lot of data in there on that CRW that we just saw this evening, so that will take some time, I know. But we'll have staff hash that out, and we can talk about it a little bit further. The most question is whether there's capacity and pressure, and we do on both, the, both cases. In uh, the understanding of how it is on the elevation of 450 feet, CRW serves and below that, the city serves, and we are below that, I would say about 85% of the site is below that. And the, and the pressure that are above 450 is currently being served by CRW because there are existing homes on it. So. Okay, you have any questions at this point? Yeah, I'm 
really people are comfortable in the first place. Now, the Alex and the Alex are still a lot of unknowns. Uh, and instead of being able to vote for something that we don't even know, what is the exact detail of that? <laughs> this is a lot of people don't know that it's just a guess. <laughs> Yeah, 
That's how we. That's how recorded it gets recorded against the property. We, there wouldn't be nothing recorded against your property, and that's the end of it. You're non-consenting. If, if you ask, you're, you didn't sign the petition. You're non-consenting. It's not applicable to you. We'll tell you to talk I, um, offline a little bit because the questions you're asking are a little bit more complicated and I think there's a misunderstanding. Um, the difference between taxation and this, this agreement that the applicant has proposed for each development unit that's created is a one time payment when that building permit is issued. So um, I think it's a little. I'm sure if we talked and clarified it, and if you had more concerns, you could certainly come back to this commission or the city commission or submit it in writing. So, you know, if they decide to continue this, you can come back after we have a chance to talk. Um, if they decide to forward, it's going to go to the city commission, and you have the chance to come to the city commission and, and speak as well. So I think there's more opportunities, but it might be good for us to talk a little bit and try and clarify some of your, your questions. Um, cause they're, they're, little, they're, they're, they're complicated. They're great questions. They're complicated. And, could probably do more justice and give you a better answer. 
good time to sit down and talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, your speakers. Any of us I would like to speak at this time. Okay, very good. Um, this time I'm going to uh, have the uh, applicant come back for their rebuttal. to see that people come to these public hearings and participate. Um, Statewide planning goal number one is citizen involvement, and it's very important that we have that citizen involvement in all of its forms. As we have said in the past, um, and I'm so interested, hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of hours of citizen involvement and citizen participation have gone before us to create the situation that we have today. We have adopted comprehensive planning that includes the surround with a seven months of analysis that's been done. I don't know where you guys have seen it, but the practice comprehensive or practice concept is huge. And we have had to document every single one of the statewide goals and every single one of the city planning goals has been addressed in so detail. Okay. <laughs> We weren't able to put it on any kind of project presentation, so we are honestly very concerned about being back in this particular year. Concept planning 
just to say a question about that. Uh, another question was raised about uh, the possibility of the Rivers Project and the work out for that question. The answer is no. We went to a survey management with the city's sub-consulting traffic engineer. Uh, we are required to analyze all projects that have been approved and account for the trust associated with those approved projects. There were two of them. is, I think you have a request for a continuance from a member of the audience in addition to staff. And 197763 uh, 6 e says that prior to the conclusion of the initial evidentiary hearing, any participant may request an opportunity to present additional evidence, arguments, or testimony regarding the application. The local hearings authority shall grant such requests by continuing the public hearing pursuant to another paragraph or leaving the record open for written evidence, arguments, and testimony pursuant to that 777 thing that we've done before that's very complicated. So I'm not sure that you have discretion to make a decision tonight as any party, in this case, um, Mr. Gunnar has made the request for continuance. Thank you. Well, I'm going to hear more testimony tonight, but Mr. Gunn will have an opportunity to, soon you continue, testify at the next hearing or submit written evidence in the interim. Okay. So, go ahead, Tony, do you have a comment? No. All right. Some things, and then you're going to decide what you want to do next. And, and the question was, if it, is the, it, it is open currently, and I would probably like to make a comment, that would be fine. So, so you just have to ask the question, and I have two, no, and two. Yeah. I just have to hear. My take is that there couldn't be equal time for a bottle of beer. I'm not sure if you have to hear the room. Yes. 
address while we're gone. We can certainly do that or we can do it at the next hearing or you can just go ahead and get yeah, to it. Yeah, I'd like to ask you this is what I want to say. I just want to make sure that we've got the, the process in here correctly. Okay, so let's ask questions of staff this time. Everybody? Um, the final question at the, at the top of my mind has to do with um, how the, um, the city's new system development uh, fee charges um, I'm going to try to apply in this instance and um, to get some idea about the process for coming up with uh, that proportionate share uh, to uh, to meet the uh, the requirements that ODOT um, has identified in their letter. Uh, that, that's primary to me. And I understand that, um, you know, we're talking about um, taking an application uh, to, to request a vote on annexation. I understand that that's what we're talking about. I know that we're not looking at a detailed development plan. And um, when we do step one, um, we're going to be looking at step two, three, and four down the line. So uh, at this point, I think uh, with respect to the continuance, I would also like to see um, the additional concerns that uh, the Coffins River Water has, as they mentioned in their letter, that, that, that's a concern to me. I think process is students and part of the process is uh, that the uh, city address um, issues like water, storm, uh, water runoff, fire, police, etc. And it's just prudent for us to get the information from that uh, that entity before we move forward. So, and I, can, I can certainly give you the new SBCs that have been created and what projects were included in coming up with that SBC rate. And as I stated earlier, um, we can probably give you a legal interpretation of proportionality, but there are so many different financing options available. Um, I could give you some examples of them, but in, in the rest of the I can give you who's going to be responsible for what, or which method of financing we might use in this area. But I, can, I can certainly give you more. That makes sense uh, to me to, I, I guess the things I'd expect them would be something like, um, you, you know, it could be handled in a number of different ways, for example. And well, it's also going to depend on how you last come in for rezoning. Uh, it could come in one lot at a time, the whole piece could come in. I mean, excuse me, I think that's going to be about evaluated. It will depend on what the zone change proposal is. Thank you. Give you some background information. Yeah, I absolutely concur with the Cockness River. There's some things that the applicant thinks, you know, this is going to be a pretty easy discussion with them. It needs a resolution, probably it is, but I want to see, I'd, I'd like to see it myself. Um, that that Cockness River, uh, that CRW, it is in fact supportive of this. Uh, it doesn't have any issues. Um, the other thing, and actually this is a question for staff, on the Transportation Impact Analysis Report, um, typically we would see uh, staff commenting on the applicant's report uh, and the city's consultant. And uh, it, would that apply here? The applicant submitted the, the TA and the work that was done on it. And because we're proposing to defer and that the analysis, while it's helpful and it's insightful, and, and I only spoke earlier and said it was for 14 years, it was for 2014, which was five years. Um, it couldn't address any political choice, so I chose not to have funds spent on reviewing it this time. We'll, we'll work with the applicant on the transportation. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. 
but in essence, we're, we're recommending that they annex five existing homes on eight lots with no development potential in the future under county zoning. There's really nothing to look at their existing homes. The transportation system is what it is. They're not proposing any new homes, not proposing any new fifth. So, um, um, so route it. It's insightful. It's good to know. It's interesting, you know, what the new trucks are and whatnot. And starting to look at this information, and trying to get a handle around it. I mean, it wouldn't serve any benefit. There's nothing to. Okay. No, that's that's good. I I, I get what you're saying. Um, I think with regards to the park post neighborhood review, I think ultimately, um, I think building. You know, the broad consensus between the applicant and, and the and the base and the park place neighborhood it would be a wise thing. So, um, I, I, you know, given that the earlier annexation was not approved here, I think that some um, some consideration needs to be uh, had here for um, you know, to build this consensus. Because right now, it sounds like park place is just not not behind this, and I think that at a minimum they should be. And, uh, yeah, that's, it's ultimately just a matter of vote, a public vote. And, uh, I would think that, um, you know, having that place firmly behind it is a pretty wise thing. So, I think the continuance just in and of itself, just because of that, is, 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 uh, prudent. Mr. Graham? I guess some of my questions are that the presence of the water concerns would if in fact come into play. It doesn't sound like they would in the annexation process at all, or if at all. Well, I I'd say 95% of the comments submitted by CRW in staff's opinion, we've either addressed, we've identified the tax laws, we've identified jurisdiction. There was a comment in there about um, indebtedness of the existing facilities and you know, how that transfer is going to occur. I think it's a legitimate argument, you know, legitimate conversation to have that we probably didn't articulate well enough in our findings. So that's probably what we're going to be focusing on unless there's another issue that we're just not aware of. Um, all the time I've been doing these annexations, the first time I've had comments from CRW, we've usually handled these very smoothly in the past in terms of transfer of jurisdiction. Um, so I, I believe we can we can get this taken care of. This is a request for five homes on a lot annexation. So the, the, the reason we work we work on here is we know that there's going to be development. And so it's a the decision uh, to say, yeah, well, you know, if you take that and there's no impact, why not? But at the same time, we know that the reason we're going to be in, well, there will be an impact. So, yeah. I'm also going to give you a grand amount of proof of that. I would like to spend any time to look at that today at all. So I'm going to spend a lot of time with some of the facts that I have to get more information in here as well. Um, but I appreciate your need for speed and wanting to get it to the City Commission. Uh, I, I appreciate you wanting to do that. Um, but due to the fact that we have a request, and the fact that staff requested as well, and my level understanding of some of these issues. I have to ask the questions tonight. So, I'm, you know, I wish I could ask the questions at this point. So, I think I think I agree with the, the uh, continuation would be the right move to I guess I just think the part is that was our fault for not getting you that, that transportation part because the other thing did. And then, I love to plan is, you know, what I kind of brought up earlier. Um, you know, we do have the park based concept plan, a lot of details gone into this. And you do have. Last year, what we've never had before is coming back and doing the zone change again. So it's a little bit different than how it ended before. You're going to, you know, you're going to get to see it again. And and and, and you know, because the architect the has said and the codes, the vote approved is zoned. Um, so there's another step in here, um, which so hopefully we can answer, you know, all the general questions, which are more specific in the council plan and the zone change. Just realize they're going to be even more specific. Um, yes, I think we understand where you're coming from with your questions. <laughs> 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 I think the general questions are, are, are great, and I think this, you know, the questions 
To what was it? February?
we held a meeting uh, with the uh, meeting, and then they provide evidence that they have communicated with the Northern Association in accordance with the, with the code here. They were also requested to me to provide evidence of how they uh, put together a meeting notification, a uh, file, signing sheet, and summary of the issues discussed. And if the Northern Association is not currently recognized, then I would contact the CIC. If the CIC can't meet or it goes back to the same. It goes back to the same. Right. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Right. Any other questions? Okay. So, the commission requested that there be some. Uh, a purpose statement added with respect to the alternative landscaping plan. And what we propose there is in on uh, sorry. Page one and five of your packet, um, or page thirteen of thirteen of seventeen fifty two. Uh, which is the traditional landscaping plan, and the first for all of those pedestrians, i.e., in this detail, uh, it would need to meet uh, the, uh, the cover of the city's transportation consultant. So that the adequate terrain radius, adequate backing space, and those sorts of things, and we're going to be designed by a landscape architect. Um, and then, uh, so that's the new piece there. Um, and the first of the system, so the second story of the town, and some of the parts of the town, and the town, and the design lines for the the side of the house. And uh both so, the definition for fabric covered storage area, which will be in the definition section of the code in chapter seventeen point oh four. And uh, we have uh, drafted language for review of membrane structures uh, for your review after uh, working with the Planning Commission and the City Attorney's Office. Um, we're waiting for comments on these review criteria from the Code Enforcement Department because they'll be the ones who are enforcing it. And so if you have any questions about those, I'd be happy to uh, go into that. Um, there are exceptions within that code section for uh, tradition, typical garden structures and, out, and outdoor play areas. However, there is and there's the discussion for the community development director to grant exceptions um, for temporary structures um, that would be up for less than 30 days per year. Um, so that's that piece. And finally, there's a um, Oh, not finally. So, the that was adopted and posted to the uh, website. One of those contracts was intended for use by staff. Uh, it's a rather complicated table um, and may have some errors in it. Um, so, we, we, we don't believe it's a, a useful tool to be up there on the website when they can just contact staff or refer to the, the design. Uh, Code to see which of the permitted uses is breached so. uh, all. Uh, sensitivity map has been made. Uh, we haven't seen a draft map sent from Shippo yet, so for that reason, um, we have to uh, get that map by February the 8th for your review. Um, we did receive a zone request for the uh, corner of Myers Road and Highway 213 from R2 multifamily to see commercial. 
Um, I think there was communication with two separate members of staff in this case, so that the uh, the uh, Mr. Clank and Ms. and Kent um, were told that they didn't need to be here tonight. Um, I think they would want to respond to staff's comments that are in the staff report. So um, what we what we did is we looked at the site um, and looked at when those properties were annexed into the into the city and how the comprehensive plan designations were applied to those properties and why. There's a number of outstanding issues that we have with the uh, request to rezone to commercial, uh, including we don't know the final alignment, alignment of the Myers Road extension to the high school. Uh, we, they, the applicant would need to address any concerns that Oda had with respect to uh, additional trips onto uh, 213 and access onto 213 if that were to be proposed. And uh, we also, we'd also need to find that um, we don't need that land for R2 residential, which is a pretty uh, significant finding to make in order to support that. And those are uh, elaborate analysis that needs to be done in order to provide that kind of recommendation at this point. So we would propose that that go through the typical rezoning process initiated by the applicant. Um, as a type four quasi-judicial decision in the future. But as I said, um, the applicant should probably have the opportunity to respond verbally at, at the next hearing, and we will inform them of that. Um, and Do we have some more questions that will be available? The concerns you have will be available and forward to the to the MR? Yeah, I think uh, we'll... Uh, there's a lot we don't know. Uh, I think they need to be able to review this uh, th this paragraph right here, and, and, and we can explain that to them in a little more detail as well. Yeah. All right. There you go. One other part of that too is that zone change from R2 to commercial and the comprehensive plan amendment and a zone change of which TPR compliance needs to be met. We're just we're not doing that as part of this process. We're not going through that whole planning, transportation planning part of that. Well, my my. my Concern would be the uh, really did how much R2 do we need and and you know I mean there's a reason that we did it I'd be I'd like to do the background for that again mm -hmm. it's been a while since we talked about that uh, I don't know the status of our needed housing analysis but we can look back and maybe see where we'll see what it was at the time yeah, yeah that's I think the last one we saw it actually mm -hmm. and uh, do we have a request to speak from uh, Dan Brody, uh, with respect to what is submitted in the record. Um, and I can elaborate a little bit on on that proposal. Okay, okay. that's regarding this area. Yeah. Uh, it's regarding a separate property. Um, okay, but I, didn't, I didn't have a chance to read that, so. Are there any questions about the code amendments today? Okay. Oh, I mean, certainly I, we talked about I have one question about the, the Linder instruction. I think I missed the meeting so much. Now, did we ever get back and have the number of complaints that we have regarding that that drew sort of this conversation? Oh, I mean, like an extra number of how many complaints have been received on us? Remember we asked for it. Did we ask for it? I thought we had. Well, I'll, I'll put it on the record and assume that we did have a response from Nancy Bush on how many enforcement cases there had been. Um, and uh, if I remember correctly, it was some, some of the reason was 300. But I'll, I'll make sure of that. And just to be clear yeah. on the language, uh, that, that does, I mean, it rolls everybody in uh, with any instructions that yeah. existing, correct? Yeah. Uh, as in the future, according to this code language. And yeah. those yeah. would be subject to, to fines, is that right? No, it's going to be a civil action through the municipal court. Uh, so that is a concern in uh, uh, how to how it will go into effect, we could monitor it. But I think, so, and I think we talked about this a little bit, that, you know, we would, we would first give a, a verbal warning, no yeah. in this case, you know, so to say, they're going to find right away, no. We talked about that it, 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 we're going to this over a period of time, so it's not going to be something that happens today. 
if, if in fact he gets approved. I, and I understand your concern because you addressed that, and that's why we addressed it at the meeting. That somebody was not going to be broadsided with this thing or blindsided with it. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter that somebody's, even though they have been given notice, some people may just be angry that we're up implementing that retroactive uh, code, what, you know, to that effect anyway. Well, I think that's why we tried to pick us uh, an implementation date of January 1st, 2011. Yeah. I mean, Kind of work that through the process a little bit. I don't remember if we had requested this or not. I, I know I remember us asking for the number of complaints. Did we take a look at what other municipalities are doing around this? Yes. Uh, Crystal looked pretty hard at other municipalities' codes, and there weren't too many examples. Yeah. And these are not bad, for example, that if they have the metal structures that, that some people buy or put up, this would be exempt from that as not being membrane, I'm guessing. No, that's a number. That's a, that would be included. It would be included. Like an RV uh, type of a shed. <laughs> That is, it's not have to cover. It's not have to cover it. Yeah, I'm going to regular. Oh, uh, it's the bad ones? Yeah. Okay. Right. So it exempts memory covered areas displayed for garden or other active outdoor area uses. So gazebos, um, even is providing shade. Not storage. Not storage. Not storage. That's kind of how we distinguish it. The definition doesn't cover um, covers areas covered by a tarp that is attached to a rigid framework, natural feature, or an other structure that is used for storage. It doesn't cover a tarp covered boat. If it was a gazebo on top of a boat, it would cover it. But a tarp covered boat or a tarp covered uh, camper or RV would not be covered by this because it wouldn't be attached for storage. It would be attached for weather protection. One other question for you guys. So, we talked about this, I just want to go through it again. For uh, B, you're not visible from the right of way when viewed at a pedestrian level. And I remember we had a conversation about that. So, um, do we want to say, I'm asking. Um, do we want to? Is this being the right the adjacent right away, or any right away? In other words, if I'm up here and this lot is down here and I'm on a right away, do we want to see it? I thought it was the discussion. At least what we had was viewed from the from the front yeah, of the house. I'm just going to clarify that then. Yeah, I'm going to add the word adjacent because it's a small, 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 it's If there are any other no questions, we can talk about um, Mr. Berg's uh, letter. Yes, we certainly can. Are you any other questions in code right now? No? Okay. Let's okay. see. Okay. I don't understand. 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 Well, uh, specifically, some attorney's office have been uh, reviewing possibility, possible language to allow someone to bring a uh, illegally created tax lot into uh, in compliance through a partitional land division process. Okay. I of And, uh, it was a, uh, when we come to a partition process, 
or or the division process, our code requires that you make uh, either a subdivision or if you've got enough land to make four lots or more, or you have a provision that allows a two lot partition. And uh, the, the two lot partition creates a small lot for an existing or proposed house, and then and that can't be subdivided further, and then leaves a large parcel. So that going into too much detail, uh, the opportunity did, did, did not exist for any other way to review it, um, this kind of code analysis. And so we haven't combined nothing has changed yet. We need to, uh, this, uh, this turned in just recently today, so we would like to review this with the city attorney and come back with a response. Um, uh, at the following meeting, with a little more background on what, how we got to this point. Yep. Good. Okay. Uh, that, that supervision exists, I think, for a lot of properties that were created illegally in the county, or passed out were illegally created in, or under old, older zoning laws, or were things that have been issued already. Under the creation of a, a tax law, because anybody can create a tax law. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to mean zoning, but uh, according to some new laws that were passed uh, under the state statutes, you now have to make sure that your tax laws that are created actually comply with local split and division and zoning ordinances. Uh, so the remedy that was proposed by the legislature was language very similar to this to allow counties to go back and try to mobilize these lots, which already had buildings on them, as long as they met the applicable code in place at the time. So there's significant issues there that need to be, significant things that need to be made in order to validate the tax law. So we'll come back and talk to you about that. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, do we still want to speak to this, or do you? Well, hold on. I just want to get the information and put in people and see if we come to a resolution. I've got a piece of property. It's, uh, non buildable or uh, in the process of reducing the tax values on now and then got an old, you know, pretty good uh, opportunity that the value is going to be reduced as soon as we develop this property. I mean, it's in the, it's, there's two tax lots and it's owned by two different uh, individuals and uh, the language in this uh, piece was drafted off the state of Oregon's ordinance. Uh, I modified for the city just to give a, a you know a starting point to solve the problem. Thank you. All right, good. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Also, we want to enter that into the record as Exhibit I. Okay. Any um, anything else? Do you have for us this evening? I do not have anything further for you except to ask for your recommendation to continue to formulate the slide 0801. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Yeah. Commissioner Stein? No. Commissioner Grover? Aye. Commissioner Lejois? Chair Powell? Aye. Aye. All right, very good. Thank you. We're almost there. That was a good one. You're doing a lot of work right now, but I've been doing quite a few inquiries lately about some future land use actions. Um, currently, we're finishing up Clackamas County, the Red Soil site. They did some minor addition and remodel to the, to the existing JR facility. Um, we did a master plan amendment a while back on that, and they finished that up. We're about to release that staff report. 
um, potential role of the current post-storm apartments coming in for a detailed development plan. Um, probably the Tri-Cities Master Plan Amendment to address the uh, parking for the offices on the car development. I will like to see that in the near future here. Um, we did have a meeting with uh, Danielson's and Safeway representatives concerning the remodel of the Safeway or Danielson site. Um, the, the we had yeah. 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 That's well, we haven't been submitted yet. We 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 have not done a pre-op yet, but my understanding was that yes, it would be a complete teardown and re, uh, rebuild. So the entire the entire oh, Danielson's yeah the whole I mean the yeah. entire yeah. building. Yep. And that was. Uh, Commissioner Stein is discussing. We have been doing a lot of work up in Park Place uh, with the Housing Authority on, uh, on their facility. We hope to get an application in from them in the near future. Uh, we did last week. The, the county held their design charade um, and solicited input not only from the residents of the Housing Authority projects, but uh, from the neighbors in general. And I know the presentation was made to the City Commission. Uh, to invite the city um, out to help with that process. But I was impressed with uh, the work that the consultants did. I'm impressed with how the county is managing that process. Very good. Then, uh, probably the next step, we've uh, we started the budget process early this year uh, since Mr. Patterson is retiring at the end of March. Wanted to get that kind of started for the next uh, person who kind of walks in, uh, give him a little help there. I was going to go through all of our 2009 numbers for applications and whatnot. So we'll probably put that in the packet next time just so you can see kind of the roller coaster ride we've been on the last couple of years um, from, you know, kind of stable to game busters to non existent. Um, but so you'll just kind of give you a, a look at what's been going on over the last, since 2001, 2002, probably? 2003. I guess that brings to, you know, my mind the discussion we had a while back and, and now that we're kind of in a slow decline um, and to or down to our last year, I, mean, I think there's some certainly some discussion on some things we, you know, where we've got the time now that we should try and address. Um, you know, I mean, this code's great. I mean, the comp plan was great. I mean, I think we've done a lot of really good work. But if there's something that we need to get done, now would be the time to do it. I mean, I know that we've got a lot of things coming up, but and I'm sure you need more stuff on your plate. But you know, uh, the sign code. I'd like to see us move forward and some more on that and before I'm uh, off this. What are you? The end of the year, next year. What are the year? The trees, yeah. There's still open things we like to keep going on. Lights. Night lights. Oh right, bright yeah. sky, bright sky. We can put together and well, maybe have a list and have a maybe at the next meeting where we can talk about some of our priorities and let's look at our priority list and so kind of narrow it down. I don't want to, I don't want to throw five hundred things at you. I'd like to show two or three things and say let's try and get these done in a year and resolve them. I guess don't forget we have the joint PC CC work session. You have that date with you? It's the second Tuesday in February, so that would probably be the. Um, what did we just continue this to? It'd be the ninth. I can. Conflict. I think I'm going to be on an airplane. Information oh. email. Yeah, it was an issue. What did you see now? I can find my flight. Uh, I'm not sure if that's. We'll, we'll follow up tomorrow with the date and the time, and we'll get, we'll we'll figure it out. Are you going somewhere? Yeah, I know. People leave it. That's all I've got. Okay. Wow, really good. Thank you. I would. Thank you.